Hi. Um, hello, everyone. So I'm just going to quickly explain the three, four time, right? So there are different time in music. But for the piece that we have to score, the time that you have there is um, three, four time. Three, four times. So let me share the music. So here you go, you have the three, four time piece. So how you count the time is very, very, very important because that's what guides you through. And then you are able to interpret the mind of the composer if you are able to observe everything that is written down in the sheet music, right? So I'm going to set the metronome to 60 beats per minute. That's your BPM. And so I'm not using a digital metronome. I have a manual one. So I can set this to give me three um, counts. So I'll just program this. Okay, so we can hit. So it is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's how you count that. If you have a four four time, that's probably change, of course. So um four will be one, two, three, four. So your three, four times is going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So for the piece that we have to score, what you have there is a three, four times. Three of the music is um, G, uh, major, one sharp. Whatever you play. So basically what that tells you is that, that there should be three beats in a bar. Three beats in a bar means that every note or whatever value of notes that you choose to use, sum up three beats in a bar. So in this place, you see they make these of crochet notes, quaver notes, and all of that. So remember, crochet is one beat. You have your um, quaver. Two quavers being together, that's one beat. So that's total two. And then you have another crochet note here, and that's that gives you total three bits in the bar. So if you go further in the piece, so there's lots of repetition on that reading. That's mostly the reading we have here, which is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's the reading that you have there, mostly. Then you get to this point, that's on the fourth, one, two, three, the fourth system on this point. Let me see if I can. Yeah, so you get to this point, and there's a slight change on this point. You have uh, four quavers instead, unlike the other ones that has two. So how would you count that would be? One, two, three, simple. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I think that's the only different reading that you have there. Let's see if we have something else. And of course, I think the end of the piece, the last system, Okay, so we have the last system, you have six quavers. So it's very simple. That's just going to count two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, there's one more system. That was in the last. Yeah, so the last now goes one, two, Three, one, two, three, 
One, two, three, then one, two, three. What you have here is a dotted meaning. Remember the value of the meaning in its original sense is two bits. So when you add a dot to um, when you add a dot to a meaning, it gives you uh, an extra value. So it adds half of the original value of the note. So half of the original value of the note will be one. So one bit added to two gives you three bits. So sum of three bits that should be in the bar. Yes. So your count for three, four time is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. So I hope that helps. It's a beautiful reading. You can even decide to do a reading exercise and decide to um, play it, of course, as it is. Yeah. So I just wanted to talk about the time signature, and I hope that helps. Okay. All right. Bye.